cookie duster and broken social scene. Uh, and today I'm on the what's in my bag. In no particular order, no playing favorites. Um, I got uh, Guilty Simpson, produced by Jay Dilla. This track, Stress, I don't know it. You know, I don't have, I think I got like one Guilty Simpson track on a Jay Dilla compilation. So I thought this would be a good, a good time to start with, you know, a Guilty Simpson track. Don't make it back like fiends, begging for free packs, and death. Switching genres, we got Ahmad Jamal. All of you, uh, Ahmad Jamal was said to be by Miles Davis, his uh, favorite piano player. And this is a really nice record, recorded in, who else is on it? No one I really know, Israel Crosby and Vernel Fournier, uh, bass and drums. It's a live record, but at the end of it, you know, it's like 40 people or something are clapping. You know, I'll flash forward to 20 years later and you know, he's playing to 2,500 people. But, you know, Take some people a while to catch on. Old Punch Card. Sam Prakop is the lead vocalist and guitar player for Sea and Cake, the Sea and Cake, and he's released a bunch of, well, a few solo records. This one, it's a really neat record. It's uh, more electronic based, but really some really interesting twists and turns here that uh, you know I would recommend. Keeping with the theme of not knowing what I'm buying, uh, Tandy Love presents Turk Jerk. And it's funny because, of course, uh, Gruff Rise, the guy from uh, Super Furry Animals, he would, the last time I bought a Turkish record, he, his quote was on the front cover of Zelda. Uh, I think it was a reissued, not Light in the Attic, but uh, I think Finders Keepers. And anyway, this has got another one of his quotes. This jerk ain't no chicken, and it's an atomic funk rooster of the fuzziest kind. And then uh, Edan, I really like Edan, he's got a quote here saying, Tandy Love reminds us once more that turkey got more flavor than turkey. Charles Bradley, no introduction for this guy. He's, you know, obviously the, the newcomer, the heavy hitter. He's a dap toner. And uh, we went on after him in a festival in Montreal, and he just slaughtered the place. He's really killer. And uh, what's the song I have? Uh, this World is Going Up in Flames, I think is the track. That's, I bought the 45 in Montreal, as a matter of fact, uh, the day after the show. But anyway, I don't have the full length, and I've been wanting to check out the full length. Another guy, I couldn't find it today, but Michael Kiwanaku is another guy to watch out for. They don't hear me Oh look, another Guilty Simpson. This time the, I've been eyeing this record back home in Toronto where I'm from for a while. And I thought today, since uh, I'm in a buying mood, and this one's produced by Mad Lib, so not a Jay Dilla track, but you know, Mad Lib, he's not so bad himself. And I just uh, recently picked up uh, a little late in the game, but Mad Villain record, uh, Doom, and uh, I'm kind of in, you know, in that sort of mode lately, that kind of hip hop. Because I am, I thought, why don't I give Shades of Blue Mad Lib another chance? Because I remember listening to this a while back and just thinking, I don't know if I'm into it that much. You know, and my bandmate, broken bandmate that is, uh, Andrew White, and he said, no, no, dude, you gotta check it out again. So, a lot of you know the story, some of you may, if you don't, he was given access to the uh, the Blue Note tapes or the reels or whatever he was, I think he was you know, a pretty lucky guy, either way, to get to go do stuff like that. <laughs> So this uh, one here, uh, we're in the jazz section here. Uh, this is Kenny Dorham. This is Afro-Cuban. I, I don't have any Kenny Dorham records. I got a lot of jazz records at home. Uh, but, you know, how bad can it be? It's got J.J. Johnson on trombone, Hank Mobley on tenor sax, uh, Horace Silver on piano, Oscar Pettiford on bass, Art Blakey on drums, a couple other guys I don't know, but you know, I heard one song on, uh, our, we have a jazz station back in Toronto called Jazz FM. And uh, I heard one track recently and I thought, yeah, I gotta get Afro-Cuban Kenny Dorm, so this is it. 
And last but not least, speaking of replacing records, I was looking for Rain and Blood, but you know, because these guys were, you know, one of my favorite bands and Rain and Blood's one of my favorite records, I thought I'd give uh, World Painted Blood uh, a chance. I got to meet Tom Mariah at a at a festival at uh, Glass uh, Glass yeah at Glastonbury. A bunch of no not Glass oh no like Reading or Leeds Reading maybe it was Reading yeah before and you know I wasn't gonna go on until I saw Slayer play because you know get the side stage vantage point and he kind of dispelled the image a little bit because on the drum riser there was a little cup of tea and then you know a little like herbal tea thing on the end, like hanging out. I'm like, oh, Tom Mariah, you know, like drinking herbal tea. And then I got to meet him afterwards. He told me that his, his kid uh, really likes taking back Sunday and he wanted to get an autograph for his kid kind of thing. So anyway, um, you know, actually here's a little side note. Uh, Dave Sardi produced some Slayer tracks. He used to couch surf at my house. And he went on to James Bond soundtracks, eh? Isn't that funny how the way the world works? But there you go. Uh, world Painted Blood, sort of to get off track there. Uh, you know, public display of dismemberment, human strain, hate worldwide. You know, I don't know what, uh, I don't know, I don't know what these guys are up to lyric-wise, but uh, there you go. That's my, uh, that's my what's in the bag. I got no ladies in there. I don't know if you know, so that was not intentional. I have nothing against women and their music. I have a lot of Joni Mitchell records. <laughs> and someone named Feist. Okay, thanks. Thanks for having me.